Well, what's going on, cousins? Welcome back to another episode of the AJ Red Show. It's me, your boy, AJ Red. Tonight, we're back with another episode of Bobby, I Love You, Purr. Y'all want to discuss the bullshit they got going on over there in Miami right about now? Let's go ahead. It's the AJ Red Show. Starring me, AJ Red. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into it. Hello, 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 and welcome back, cousins, to another episode of the AJ Red Show. I want to take this time real quick to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. If this is your first video, please take this time now to hit that notification bell. When you hit that notification bell, <clears throat> that basically indicates that when I upload these videos, you can be one of the first ones to watch and comment on it. Um, also, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. That's the like button. That really helps out a lot. Um, and definitely to my faithful uh, subscribers, the A1s since day ones. Welcome back. I love you guys so much for being here with me um, through everything, even through um, shit just starting out from the ground. I've started from the bottom. Now we're here, right? And we still got to go all the way up. Still got a ways to go. And we're going to make it. I'm going to make it thanks to you guys, right? So, uh, again, welcome back to the AJ Red Show. Again, tonight we're covering um, Bobby, I Love You, Purr. Um, as you guys know, I've, I've told you before, I don't really like watching this show, but seeing as though I saw it like a commercial when it first started out before the uh, season started, I saw a little snippet of it, and I started out, and I was like, well, shit, let me go look at this shit and see what the fuck's going on. Now, mind you, I don't know a whole lot about Bobby Light. I just know I think he came from Love and Hip Hop Miami or some shit like that. But, um, I'm looking for my lip chat, but they ain't around. But, um, seems as though I, I looked up a couple of things. You know, he was a cute little guy. He was a handsome little fella, but he went and got all this shit done with his lips and whatnot and got his hair looking kind of scary and so forth. And so I'm really not fucking with it or feeling, feeling it. So I'm trying to understand why these guys are here. Um, hell, I'm trying to understand why Bobby here seems looking for love, but the whole time, like I said, all they've been doing is fighting, bickering, and bullshitting. But, um, Tonight's episode basically starts off basically uh, Bobby and Roland Ray are sitting around chit-chatting, shooting the bull, talking shit, you know, look like they've been partying all night long, which I'm sure they probably have off guard knows what. And Roland Ray probably can't do too fucking much because he got to take his motherfucking schedule medications. But anyway, they were having discussions about how they felt like it was such a good decision to get rid of Hot Wheels. And the decision was mostly predicated upon not only that Davion, his handler, you know, was kissing on one of the contestants, uh, one of the castmates on the show, you know, but that the fact of even if he chose Hot Wheels in the end, the, the ultimate thing would be something about the betrayal shit. And he didn't really like Hot Wheels attitude. He liked, but the, the fucked up part about it, he said how he liked up, he liked how Island Boy is feisty and is forceful and tells him what the fuck he is and ain't going to do. But Hot Wheels get with your ass and get your match other than standing up to your ass on two feet, 10 toes down, you know, he does better than Island Boy any day. But they felt pretty confident, had the conversation, the two of them, that they were setting their ways and they were confident and good with the fact that they came to terms with Hot Wheels needed to go. Um, the next challenge I find to be, honestly, a bullshit challenge. Um, Bobby wants to go through all of the guys' phones. My thing is this. I will say this for for a relationship, privacy is a is is a thing, you know. Uh, but if you have trust, that's an even better thing. So you know, if you got that part out the way in the beginning, you know, you go through my phone, I go through yours, or whatever have you. We got that understanding. Should we good from here on out, or it's just if I choose to pick up your phone and you choose to pick up mine, there should be no real big issue. Um, but in likes of just meeting someone and asking them to go through their phone. And like some of them said, fuck, you didn't, you, 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 you didn't unlock yours. Excuse me, I'm burping all up on the motherfucking camera. You didn't let me go through yours. But anyway, it's an ignorant motherfucking challenge, but I'm gonna tell y'all how the shit went down over that sort of thing anyway. Um, now, I'm gonna ask y'all a question. Y'all have to drop down in the comments on this one. Y'all may not want to, but damn it, I'm sure old enough calling on you. I'm calling upon the powers that be, which is y'all. Answer this question. Now, I thought to myself, Roland Red's on here trying to help Bobby find love 
and stuff like that. And he always talking shit and carrying on. I wonder who around there busting uh, uh, rolling raised cakes open. I'm wondering if he even getting his cakes, you know, chimed or punched. I just wonder. I wonder if anybody's like taking them little baby doll legs and just throwing them over his shoulder like a continental soldier and just ramming up in him like... <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm wondering, you over here trying to help somebody else find love. You know, you're talking all this big, bougie, big, badass shit. But uh, who's loving you is the question. You're trying to help somebody else find love. But I'm just wondering if anybody taking them little legs and slinging them backwards and then, you know, jumping off of that thing like a little bungee cord. Um, so basically, in this episode, it was seemed like it was long as fuck, but they jumped right into the, ep uh, the I'm sorry, the challenge which took up most of the episode. So I decided to take the time since there's not that many contestants left and some have been eliminated. I said, you know, well, fuck it. I tell cousin them how it went down bit by bit, person by person. So I'm gonna just run through them, you know what I'm saying? The little challenge, because like I said, most of the episode was taped, you know, fucking uh, sucked up in, in footage by this foolish ass challenge. So um, let's see. I think it was Soul that came in first. Soul is one of the ones. He's also has an OnlyFans page. He's a porn star. But Soul is the name that he was given by Bobby Lights. He basically walked in after this. Now, let me, let me just back up a little bit. Now, when they met the guys downstairs in the kitchen, there was some other dude. I can't remember his name. I want to say Anthony, but I don't fucking remember. And Roland Ray. And basically asked everybody to hand over their phones at that present moment. And later on in the day, they would meet up with Bobby and go over this, go to this silly ass, ridiculous ass, makes no motherfucking sense as we need some motherfucking rates as, uh, you know, everybody got to get paid on the set and shit like that as motherfucking challenge. It was just stupid. But anyway, like I was getting to then, Soul, I believe, was one of the first uh, to go into the room to sit, to stand before Bobby Lights. And then Bobby asked him, he was like, but shit, you know, unlock your phone and he was like no and you know Bobby was basically saying like what the fuck you mean if you hear from me why can't you unlock your phone and let me see what's in it and so basically explained you know he was like I feel like if we confident with each other and this is soul right here he said we confident with each other and we in this relationship he said I don't feel comfortable going through your phone and I don't feel comfortable you going through my phone now that yes could have gone several ways my thing is I'm pretty sure Soul probably has a plenty to hide. You know what I'm saying? He's he's a, a porn star. I don't know who the fuck is texting his phone or who the fuck is DMing him or whatever. And he may not want Bobby to see that and may not want the world to see all of this. You know, I don't know. It, it could be a lot going on, but there probably was there something to be hidden. Um, seeing as though he, he didn't want to do that. And I think he also asked Bobby to see his phone or some shit like that. But honestly, I think, no, Bobby offered to give him his phone. He was like, no, I don't want to see your phone either. I think that's a violation of your right. Yada, yada, yada. And so Bobby, shit, disrespectfully dismissed him. Crouton, the bone ass, poor thing Crouton. I feel like sometimes y'all Crouton be on that shit. I'm telling y'all, Crouton be over there wiggling, studying, uh, uh, stuttering. I know I be, and I tell y'all all the time, I don't give a fuck. That's my motherfucking weakness. That's my one flaw. And if you can't get with it, then there's other pages you can watch. I'm confident in myself and I'm comfortable with me. It, a bitch, ever since I've been a child, I had a speech impediment. My family speaks fast as a motherfucker. Everybody swears we uh, speak Chinese when the whole family gets together or uh, uh, Spanish or some shit. But no, most of us got big lips and the other ones just talk fast as a motherfucker. We doing, you know, 75 and a 30. When it comes to speaking, we don't fuck around and, and, and we don't abide by the speed uh, zones when it comes to speaking. But um, so but Crouton with his, his speech or whatever, it seems like to me, and I haven't met y'all, uh, it seems to me that uh, he's either nervous about something really bad or he done took a bump or he done smoked a premium. He done fucked around with something that he probably shouldn't have before he come. He always sweating like 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 a raisin in the sun, like a, 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 a white raisin in the sun because he ain't. Yeah, he always sweating all the time and shit and always nervous and fucked up. So basically he gets into the room and he states how he doesn't really want to turn over his phone and give Bobby Lights his phone because his family made him sign a motherfucking non-disclosure agreement. Basically saying they don't they don't mind his lifestyle. They just don't want their uh, business or uh, family uh, business being exploited in a reality show. Um, 
they're just not okay with that. Uh, they figure he should have better standard. They're okay with him being gay. They, he said they even love Bobby Lights. That's what he claims. I don't know if that's the truth or not. We haven't heard from any one of those people at this fucking point, but we don't know what the fuck's going on. But the, bo the bottom line is, Crouton said his folks don't want to be put on the television and most of his shit in his phone is pertaining to family business. And he said, ergo, he didn't want Bobby going through his phone. Now, I'm, I don't really think Bobby went through the motherfucker, I don't think. So, somewhere along the line, Crouton was dismissed after they had a back and forth conversation. He was sent about his way and uh, he wasn't even really thought about putting being put up for elimination, but so so was sure the fuck was. Um, go hard, go hard came through. That's good hell. Let me see if I can find good go, go hard. He's somewhere. Oh, there you go, right there. He came in. Bobby asked for his phone. He gave his phone up. You know, unlocked it and shit like that. He was seemed to be a little bit nervous at first, and everything didn't seem to to, to pan out all that well. And then, especially when Bobby found text messages, I think, related to uh, uh, passed back and forth between Gohard and da uh, Davion, which was the handler. Bobby found those messages. And that made Bobby kind of pissed. Um, it seems like Bobby is really disturbed by this person, Davion. And my thing is, he continuously says he's not pressed by this bitch, but at the end of the day, my sis, you are, you are more pressed than you even know about it. You know what I'm saying? And your subconscious, bitch, you are so worried about this girl. Is, and then she, she had the nerve to say, yes, y'all texting her. She's gone from the house, but she's still in Miami. You keeping tabs on a girl like that? You, your self-esteem that low around all these men that claim they come here to want you. You can't focus on these motherfuckers that stood at the house that you decided to keep here. But you worried about another bitch that called something on the back end. And, and with, a, with a motherfucker, you should have been let go a long time ago, which is Island Boy. And Island Boy is a good looking guy. I like the ac accent and everything. I like sometimes the style of dress. You know, he gets a little loose with the chips. He goes lady-like lady when he gets a little drunk and carrying on. He gets a little queenish. But he's still a good a good contestant. But in the aspects of the shit that he's pulled, he's actually kissed the handler. And for all we know, may have done more than they might have laid some Jamaican meat on him. I don't know, might have gave him some Jamaican KFC. I don't know. We don't know. But the bottom line is, when it came down to Go Hard, he gave Go Hard a little slack for that and told him that the shit had to basically end. So he basically put Go Hard the fuck out the room after going back and forth for a few moments. Um, Savage came in. Um, Savage came in. He seemed to be, actually, he was like, well, I don't have shit to worry about. Ain't nothing in my phone. He's also a porn star um, somewhere out there in the world. I don't know shit. Uh, but he got a platform himself or on some platforms, a farm plats. I ain't gonna say that. I was about to say some ignorant shit. But bottom line is, Savage comes into the room. He says he has nothing to worry about. He's confident in his phone. He has nothing in there that's gonna make Bobby kind of leery or weary about him being um, chosen with the necklace at the end of the episode. So he said, well, shit, basically, you can go through my phone. I really don't give a fuck. You know, at the end of the day, we already know he's a porn star. So if Bobby found anything pertaining to such, you know, basically, the like mine is to look overlook it until you decide to choose this man ultimately, and then y'all can have that discussion as to whether he's going to continue that career or dealing with somebody in the background or whatever. But he opened the phone, therefore find the text messages now. Also, I, Davion must be a bad bitch. I don't know what the fuck Davion must got dust on his lips, cooler, or he was must wear some good old uh, love potion number nine cologne or perfume or some shit like that because he drew all the men to his yard with his milkshake. He had them all coming down there. And all these motherfuckers is texting him in some like shape, form, or fashion. Because Gohard said he was texting him just to check him and see if he was all right, but they were old messages. Mm -hmm. Savage says, basically, he knew Davion from Houston, that they both reside here in Houston, and they were friends, like long-term friends. And, you know, that was the only reason he had text messages in his phone from him. It was nothing pertaining to you know, sexual encounters, want to get involved with each other, you know, want to yum, yum, old bouncy, bouncy, want to run around the bedroom and fuck a little while, something like that. It wasn't anything pertaining to that. It was basically, hey, friend, how you doing? Checking on you. I heard you got, you know, I, I, I saw the shit went down. I knew you got put out. Are you okay? But that didn't seem to sit right with Bobby either. So again, Bobby is very pressed and this is showing up and I don't know if this shit is, is written into the script because to make some tension, 
But again, this shit is making Bobby really uh, upset about all that's going on. Um, so he, you know, of course he puts Savage the fuck out the room. He, you know, says she away. Um, Hercules comes in. Hercules is so confident about his look himself. He's a good looking guy. You know, he's built all up and carrying on and whatnot and so forth. I don't speak the goddamn men now. And carrying on and so forth and whatnot. But in the end, he's very confident, basically kind of overly confident to say the least. And when I say that, basically, you know, he was confident to the fact that when he gave Bobby his phone and opened the motherfucker, uh, it was some text messages between him and some girl, some Caucasian chick left behind in Las Vegas. And basically, it's some girlfriend that used to be something of his at once upon a time, but they apparently claim they don't have anything else going on. But possibly, sounded like to me they had a possible open relationship is what it sounded like to me because when they FaceTimed and Bobby got on the motherfucking FaceTime with him and asked her, say, you know your man likes men? She was like, yeah, I know. And he was like, well, oh, okay, kind of shocked or whatever. And then he gonna say, oh, the straight men love me. Well, bitch, he ain't straight. He's bisexual, nine to my ten, he gay, bitch. If he done been with a man already, he's gay. Just cancel it, call it what it is. Y'all would... Y'all got too much going on with all these adjectives and listen. But anyway, so, you know, with that being said, he was in his truth. He told the honest truth. And so with that, Bobby still had a lot to think about when it came to Hercules and his relationship with this woman and the pending relationship between he and Bobby if he chose him in the end. So with that, Hercules, of course, was dismissed. Next motherfucker in the room. Boom, boom, kaboom. Big purrs in the motherfucking room. Yes. Lymphedema and all. He's in that motherfucking style fashion. And they're using this motherfucking songs on the goddamn cover. How the fuck y'all doing? You don't like it? Too bad. His music is actually kind of popping. I think that's his music they playing by Big Purr. It's actually kind of popping. I actually like the shit. So if it goes up on iTunes or something, Big Purr, I'm actually looking to buy it. But anyway, Alakazam, Alakazoom. Somebody yell because Big Purr just walked up in the motherfucking room. And when he gets down up in there, Big Purr was like, shit, open the motherfucker. Open the motherfucking phone. There ain't nothing up in there for me to be shamed of. There ain't nothing up in there I'm doing wrong. There ain't nothing there for me to be called out on. So go on up and through there. So Bobby gets the code. And he going on, going up and through the phone. And, you know, saw a couple of things, text messages, old, old shit. You know, he concluded it was old, old text messages and old, old pictures. But the pictures was of... You know, Big Purr, land, oh, and Hercules has a, a, some video of him laying up in the bed with an unshaved uh, afro ass. So, Hercules, shave your ass. But back to Big Purr. Um, yes, Big Purr was laying up in the, he was laying up in the bed doing some naked shit. Shit, Big Purr was so confident, he was up in there sucking dick on his phone and videotaped the whole thing and took pictures and everything and had no problem with it. And he told him, say, look, he told all of us, he said, what, the, listen, it's in my phone, it's some old shit, but bottom line is, why am I ashamed of what I'm good at? If I do some good shit, then, hey, I ain't ashamed of it. I can make you feel real good with my mouth. How you doing? <laughs> That's what Big Purr said. So with that being said, it was kind of short lived with Big Purr because he came right out and got to the get down, opened the phone, showed his shit, explained it real quick, and Bobby laid around there and dismissed his ass and said, you know what? Big Purr right now, the only motherfucker in the house right now looking like, you know, pretty good as to definitely getting a chain tonight. Um, and oh Lord, I can't, where is he at? Dingling, listen here, they named him Dingling. Uh, look, <clears throat> he got too much going on for me, something wrong with that boy. He need to go somewhere and get himself a cat scan. I, if anybody started a GoFundMe page to, uh, to put up a Dingling to get a cat scan, and, to, and a mental evaluation, please let me know, send me, drop down in the comments and send me a link to the uh, to the thing because I want to put $10 on it because he sure the fuck need a good CAT scan and a good psychiatrist via uh, a, a telemedicine. Yeah, a televisit with a psychiatrist. He crazy as fuck. Do y'all see some of the shit he be doing? All that crazy as fuck. And come to find out the motherfucker got six chilling. Six head of chilling. Like my grandma say, six head of chilling and five baby mamas. Now, who in the fuck lay around there and just say, okay, it's, it's, he's just so cute, so good looking, or some, some, some hot dick so big, I just got to have a little taste of that, you know, Starburst or whatever, blah, 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 all that yum, yum, bouncy, bouncy bullshit. Five of these chicks, and then one of them apparently more than once, 
Six children as goofy as he is, and he out here doing this old bullshit. When his kids grow up and look at the fuckery he got going on, I wouldn't dare wake up to grow up to be talking about calling him my motherfucking father in public. I'm sorry. It'll never happen if I was his child. But the bottom line, Ding Ling comes in, got four motherfucking phones. Of the four phones, Ding Ling say, fuck that. I smelt the rat in the water. Something big was coming, and I wanted to make sure to be ahead of it. So I made sure to only charge one of them bitches. All the rest of them, dead. D-O-A. Dead on arrival. When I handed them hoes over to y'all, they was dead. And the only one that was actually living and alive and had any kind of juice in that motherfucker had nothing. It didn't have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, yeah, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, Tic Tac, none of that shit. He ain't had none of that up in the phone. It was dry as a bitch. And so basically, real quick, again, it didn't take very long. Bobby dismissed his ass and sent him on about his business, about his way, and dogged him out like a fucking dog and told him to get the fuck up out of his room. Um, next was Trax. Trax came on up in there pretty confident, as Trax had been pretty much throughout the competition, or, uh, uh, yeah, throughout the show, basically, other than swimming and, uh, some other shit he knew how to, or dancing, the sex dance. He knew how to do none of that shit. There's no wonder one of them didn't get, uh, get him eliminated, but he still, he just holding on, he yet holding on. He's yet holding on to God's unchanging hand. He's trying to stay in the show. He's trying to make sure he's the final pick for Bobby. So then he comes down to the room, and with no problem, he comes in with a whole song. I'm not going to give it to you, but <laughs> he wrote a song about it like the hit, hit go. Bobby, you can check my phone anytime, because my phone is something always fucking dry, some shit like that. Because basically it was. He looked in his phone. There wasn't no text. There wasn't no pictures. No shit like that. But one thing we did find out is Trax got a thing for uh, trans women. And Bobby's trying to figure out, Bobby said, what the fuck are you going to do with me if you like trans women? Now, and answer, I'm, I like to answer that, Bobby. Um, shit, you ain't far from being one. I mean, look, you ain't got your lips juiced up and shit and all kind of stuff. And I believe you got your ass done. Rolling Ray said you got all pure ass, but I believe some of it's been done because there ain't no way a girl like that going to go down to the New York and Miami and get just her lips done where they go basically the home of ass, the home of uh, uh, Brazilian butt lips, and go down and not get one and she on uh, uh, a reality show. I just don't believe it. So I think the girl had a lip more work than just the lips. But the bottom line is she was fine just the way she was. She went and fucked up the whole thing. But um, what was I saying? Oh, so Trax, you know, Trax uh, came down and his phone's dry as fuck. Ain't nothing going on his phone. He was a done deal, sent him on about his business. Allen Boy. Allen Boy's phone got open. Allen Boy still had text messages from Hot Wheels handler, Davion. And the text messages that were found, that were kept in the phone, and I'm guessing on some fuck shit, Allen Boy decided to keep the messages so I guess he could say one day, well, this is what he texts me. But motherfucker... Bobby, Bobby stay high and drunk half the time, but even I'm not that stupid to sit down and read text messages and not figure out what the fuck went on betwixt that. You didn't text nothing back in between that. Nigga, you went and deleted all the motherfucking text messages. You may have well gone and deleted the whole fucking thread. You were already found out. Everybody already knew about it. The handler was gone. Your black ass stayed. You know, you may as well have gone and deleted the whole fucking thread and deleted the boy's number and called their day. But in the end, he walks in. He got all these messages. You know, Bobby sees the shit. He, re he recognized, like I said before, that there's been some alteration in the messagation. And so, with that, again, Island Boys kicked the fuck out the room, you know, called all kind of names and shit, kicked him the fuck out the room and sent him by this business. Rerun comes in. Rerun is the ex of um, uh, Bobby Lights. They've been together some time ago for some while, and somewhere down through the years, things didn't go right between them, and they decided to split up. And uh, Rerun, I forget his real fucking name by this point, not because I'm all on the uh, nicknames, was on some fuck shit, couldn't get it right, and now he's back for a second chance, which is why he's named Rerun, to do it again the right way. And so basically he comes in and he's another one that basically says, fuck that, I'm not going to open my phone for you. And then he says, Bobby, well, if that's the case, let me see your phone. And... Bobby was in turn like, no, nah, fuck all that. We not finna do no, no, no phone exchange and bitch open your phone. Let me take a look like the reading rainbow um, pocketbook, whatever the fuck. I just made the shit up. So that's my thing. Fuck it. Like it or not, cuz that's me. But he said no. He, he refused to open his phone for Bobby. He said, fuck you. It is what it is. If I got to, you know, bounce. And that's my thing. You wouldn't to lose a motherfucker over something simple as that. If that's the case, be ready to man up to the shit and face it discuss it and get it out the way and move on doing better if you both accept 
But with that being said, don't just make yourself look that mysterious by saying no and not asking at least a decent reason as to why, you know. But again, like I said, Bobby's not in a relationship with any of these guys. So I think that's really going kind of overboard asking them for that at this particular point. You know, not knowing who the fuck he's going to pick. Because like they said, it's like 12 of us here or 8, 10 of us here. So with that being said, you got 10 picks. I got one, you. So I don't know what the fuck they're over there thinking up in the household. How they operating and how they moving. But I know one of them love to smoke weed, dingling, love smoking weed, probably smoking primos. That's probably be so fucking crazy about their head in the evening time. Um, Elimination time. Let's get right straight to the business. Elimination time. So let me just tell y'all. I, I keep saying this and I'm not going to get enough of it because as much as this happens, as much as it happens, I'm going to uh, say something about the shit. Rolling Rick gets somebody near when he come rolling out there with them blouses open like that, with them with them bosom, with them sleeping hollow ass titties hanging down there like that with that chain hanging betwixt them. You can't, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am, press him. She closed the door. Th throw the whole thing away. Burn it all. Start over. Fuck that. You can't. You just can't come out there with your cleave out, and then your titties look like, you know, look like a horseshoe, with the open side down to the ground. You just can't do that, and then look like, look like somebody took one of them little things like the barbecue pit with with the long handle on it, and just set fire to his titties and just let it sit up under there, until it started waxing, you know, melting like a wax candle. And then they just stopped somewhere about there and it just cooled off and looked like a mountain with lava coming down it. It just looks bad. It just looks bad on you. And I think you just shouldn't wear open blouse material. I don't think that's your thing this season. I think you should cover everything up. Um, I, I, I'm, it just makes me sick. I don't, I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. I think the uh, producers need to do something about that. I think somebody needs to write into the show. Hell, I'm talking about it now. I think somebody need to write into the show. I think somebody need to boycott some of them outfits they let Roland Ray come rolling out there with on because the it, it, the titties look like too just too sad hush purpose. Then I don't, and then got nerve to have a big old chain hanging down between them. Listen, zip that thing all the way up past that bosom line where we see where they drip dropping out to the side and the left. Zip it up past that thing and let that chain just hang up on the outside right there. We can get a good look at that chain, but we can't pay attention to that chain when them titties is sitting like lit oh harangatang titties bitch that just don't make sense that's all kinds of fucked up you sitting there walking around trying to judge somebody else and you walking around harangatang titties underneath your blouse and then you got nerve to come out there and open your shirt up and let it let them just show the world your big ass titties i can see it maybe she was trans or something but i mean just because you wear makeup and shit just because you go to sephora and whatnot sis don't know and just because you wearing shades looking like Kim Burrell, bitch, that don't make you, <laughs> that don't make you hot and famous. Take that and cover her up. Somebody cover her. The next time she come running out there, one of you boys get a, 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 a shawl and put on her and cover her up. But enough about her. So moving on to the eliminations. I'm going to just wrap it up here and get down to the nitty gritty. Everybody came down, had their moment, got their chain with the exception of two. And of course, there was a corn toss between two, as usual, which was Island Boy and Rerun. So as you can tell, Bobby Lights has a type. So you can already kind of tell whom he's going to choose in the end. And if he doesn't choose that particular person, I will be surprised and I would definitely know that this is a fucking setup. But the bottom line is he has a type. He likes him tall and slender. And shit, Rerun got ankles like oxtails. Um, so he need to go get his blood pressure checked. He, he, he's a handsome man, but he don't get his blood pressure checked because the mangoes look a little swole in them Christian Louis Vuittons. I think that's what they are. Are Christopher Louis Vuittons? The knockoff version? Oh, anyway, and, and you know, Island Boy, you know, he, he saying you don't like no lady and all this different shit, but Island Boy, when she get a couple of juices up in her, honey, she goes straight to the, to the lady side. She goes straight to Lady uh, well in Department B over there in Dillard's. You can find them right up over there in Macy's in the, in the latest department. But in the end, the bottom line, everybody got their chain. Everybody got to stay. It came down to the first person was actually eliminated. I think you all can kind of take a guess. Maybe so. Well, so, so got eliminated this round. So got eliminated because it said, Bobby said that he didn't give enough. He didn't show enough enthusiasm. He was too laid back. He was too cool. He was too just... 
not so into him, not trying to run up behind him and spend so much time with him. So I take it he's kind of, so is probably one of the guys that figure if I'm here for you and you really feel that connection, then you'll gravitate towards me as well and leave all these other clowns to the side, which is kind of what he said in so many words, but I'm not saying that's what he said, um, you know, verbatim. But uh, with it being said, also what topped it over, he would not open his phone, he would not give his phone up, and Bobby felt like that was a deal breaker on his end with those, him having, I guess, those two exes or maybe three exes. So he sent him home, gave him some sugar, and sent him on by his way. Uh, came around next. Next on the chopping block, up for sale. They brought down Savage, and they brought down... Who did they bring down? Savage and somebody standing next to one another. Fuck, I can't remember who it was. Savage and another one. Who the fuck was it? Savage and Dingling. They brought them two down there. And... You know, they kind of, I think that's who it was, and they kind of went off, went off the two of those and asked them what the fuck they thought, who the, you know, why why should I choose you and all this old gibble gabble ass bullshit here. And ultimately, the bottom line is, uh, with knowing that Dingling got six children by five baby mamas, he still chose to keep Dingling there and sent Savage ass the fuck home. He said because um, Savage was friends with Davion and you know, eventually he figured that would cause a rift in their relationship if they were to actually be together in the end. He chose him because he also, like I said, he is pressed, worried, and concerned, and quite frankly, intimidated by Miss Davion, honey. Miss Davion, whoever you are, you must be a bad bitch. I didn't get to see you on the camera, but you a badass bitch. You got to know that for yourself and your own rights, bitch. I hope you still watching this show and you still sitting around somewhere with a cocktail in your hand and a motherfucking uh a blunt rolled up and just watching this shit with a sip and see and paying attention and giggling and sending them boys texts and just letting them know, yes, bitch, I know she pressed about me and she still works because she mentions it every time she in one of the episodes. So, yes, I get it. And I definitely agree with it. Um, I mean, again, like I say, he kept Island Boy, you know, he kept all the other guys, but everybody is still here with the exception of now Hot Wheels, Savage, uh, Demarion, Ben Gone, Soul is gone now. Uh, I think T T B or T D is gone. Colgate is gone now, and Cameron was too much of a lady said for him. So they're all gone now. So there's only eight guys that remain, and nobody's in the wheelchair except for Rolling Ray. Those are the only people that. Well, he's not even a contestant, but I guess part of the cast. But anyway, that's all I got for y'all on this bullshit and this fuckery here with this here. Like I told y'all, y'all see y'all, y'all watching, but y'all watching me for it. I appreciate that and I love you guys for it. But anyway, um, if you are new to the page, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you are an old subscriber, I love you so much for rocking with me ever since the beginning. You are, you guys are so near to my heart. And don't don't think that you knew you newbies are not. Because trust me, you are. I love you all equally. I just got to, you know, got to move things around, shake it up, give everybody the, the, the credit they deserve and where to do. Um, but yes, remember to like, uh, hit that notification bell now if this is your first video so that you'll be one of the first ones again to watch this video or any others I upload um, and hit that uh, like button, which is a thumbs up. Make sure you do that on every video that you choose to watch. Please, uh, sir, dear, and ma'am, uh, uh, did I get that right, sir, ma'am? Well, shit, some of them, sir, man, I got, I got to get people out there and trans and all that. And I love y'all equally. Y'all good sisters and brothers. I love y'all too. Much, much more. I love y'all. Um, but also, um, like I said before, be on the lookout for new things to come. Like I said, I'm going to try and make sure I put up the uh, address and uh, um, uh, email address and everything for when I have these one giveaways and also if there's anything that you want to send to me um to put up on a platform to showcase your product uh you know like i said i'm all about helping somebody so i want to use my platform to do that as well so um be on the lookout for that uh that address and that information because you'll get to send those products to me you only need to really send one um and honestly, you go, you can gift it to me, you know what I'm saying? Because like I say, I don't, I'm not asking you guys for anything. Um, but if there's something you want to give at that time, then that'll be great. And I will appreciate that blessing. But um, again, I want to make sure I'm helping people, helping somebody, okay? Um, so with that being said, share with your friend. Um, share with somebody you know. Share with somebody you don't know. 
share with somebody you like. Share with some son bitch you ain't kidding nothing about. Because nine to my to ten, if you don't like me, I'm guaranteed they will. And nine to my to ten, your ass do too. That's why you keep stopping by here, uh, eating my greens and my uh, cornbread and candle and drinking up all my damn strawberry Kool Aid, you know, and shit like that. And there running about the door too much. You got to go do this and do that. You ain't got seventy two thousand. Y'all keep sliding y'all ass through here. Go on and hit that notification bell. Hit that subscribe button and join the family. All right. Anyway. Love yourself real good always and love somebody in return that's willing to love you in the same way back. All right? Till the next video, y'all take care.